In this video, I want to take a fresh look at computing the torque on something. And the idea is that rather than finding the perpendicular component of the force and exerting that through the entire lever arm, so this is what that looks like, we can actually come up with an equivalent representation of the torque that involves translating the force vector. So before I do that, let's just write down the formula for the torque. That was the perpendicular component of the force multiplied by the length of the lever arm. And that perpendicular component of the force is F sine theta times R. So here's a new way to look at it. Suppose we translated the force vector all the way to a point where the lever arm, that is the displacement vector between where our force is and where the rotation axis is, actually becomes perpendicular to the force. So now I'm pretending that my force is attached right here in exerting its force through a perpendicular lever arm right here, where what's the length of that perpendicular lever arm? I've already labeled a right angle in this, and you can see that we're dealing with a right triangle. And the hypotenuse of this thing is R. And the side we're looking at here for this lever arm, R perpendicular, is the opposite side to the angle that's been labeled. So I'm going to have an R sine theta for that. So while this seems like a reckless maneuver, I can prove that it's correct by writing down the torque exerted by this force through the perpendicular lever arm. Well, that would be the entire force because it's perpendicular to the lever arm multiplied by the length of the lever arm. And look at that. It's exactly the same formula we got before. So translating the force until the lever arm becomes perpendicular is a perfectly legitimate way of computing torques, and it can save you a lot of work. Let's look at an example. So in this example, we're asked to compute the torque on the square plate in two different ways, and it's implied here that the rotation axis is the center of the square. I made a little curly arrow there. And the first way to do it is sort of the old way. I have a force actually attached to this point on the corner and I want to find the perpendicular component of that force, and then I'm going to multiply by the size of the lever arm. The issue is that requires quite a bit of calculation. So let's look at the perpendicular component of the force first. That's going to be F sine theta. But that means we need to compute theta. Well, thankfully, I've made this situation as simple as possible by using a square. And so this angle is 45 degrees, and I get F sine 45 degrees. And then I need to find R, and it's implied here what I'm trying to do is get that in terms of L. So let me label some things. If the square has a side length of L, then half of that's going to be L over 2. And there's an L over 2 right there. And there's another L over 2 right there. Now we have to actually use the Pythagorean theorem to find R. So R is going to be the square root of L over 2 squared plus another L over 2 squared. And that's the square root of L squared over 4 plus another L squared over 4, which gives me an L squared over 2 in the square root. And I can pull the L out of that and write it as L over square root 2. Finally, I'm going to write down the torque exerted by this force. So it's the perpendicular component of the force. That was an F sine 45 degrees times the size of the lever arm, which was L over root 2. And then I have to remember the sine of 45 degrees is 1 over root 2. So I have FL times 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2, which gives me 1 half. And I end up with 1 half FL. Now let's look at the advantage we gain by using the translating the force technique instead. So all I've done is slide my force vector along until the lever arm becomes perpendicular to the force. And we call that the perpendicular lever arm. And we already showed mathematically this is a legitimate way to compute torque, so we're good. And now that my force is just perpendicular to this lever arm, and this lever arm's length is so easy to measure, it's just L over 2, I write down the torque. It's equal to F times L over 2, in other words, 1 half FL. And so we've basically saved 90% of the work by realizing we can get torques by translating force vectors. This can be really handy in a lot of statics problems. And we'll see an example of that in a later video.